to the Chocolate Brothers. Um, I'm Sam Riley. Zach Brown. And today we have a special guest. We have uh, Jake from the Kansas City Group. Yep. How you doing, Jake? Hello. I'm doing good. How are you guys? Good. Really good. Um, um, very well. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. Happy that the camera's working this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're uh, we're gonna test this out and see how that goes. Yep. Um, we have Jake on the show uh, because we have a, a really awesome opportunity coming up here uh, for Kansas, uh, the Kansas City area, right? Yeah, it's Kansas City area. I mean, it's a general area, so it, it incorporates both the Kansas and the Missouri side. So this particular tournament is going to be in Lenexa, Kansas, which is by Overland Park, so at our collector's cash shop. Okay, so, and it, how, how far is that from Kansas City? It's honestly, I live on the plaza in Kansas City, so it's probably about a 15 minutes from downtown, maybe 20 minutes. Okay, so for people like us who are thinking about flying in, it'll be pretty convenient. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if they have a, a way of transportation, it's pretty easy to get around. Otherwise, you know, there's there's hotels near the store if somebody was wanting to stay near the store for the event. Okay, sweet. So tell us a little bit more about the event. Okay, so um, in February, we are hosting the Teen Cup. Uh, it's going to be February 3rd and 4th, uh, the Friday before... Uh, tournament begins. We're actually going to have like some warm up tournaments, and we'll be giving out some prizes and in store credit, doing like booster drafts and giving away some promos. Um, so on February third, there's going to be an in person registration starting at 9 a.m. and the tournament's going to begin at 10 a.m. and the rounds that day are going to be Swiss best of one, and then obviously we'll top cut to day two based on the overall record, and then on day two the next day. Our rounds will be single elimination, best of three, and we'll have side events going on, you know, for everybody who didn't make it sadly on day one for day two. So there will be, you know, booster drafts, win mat tournaments, and various yeah. things like that. We have a uh, pre-registration link as well for anybody that wants to uh, wants to register ahead of time for that event. And you can find that either at collectorscash.com or at fstcgkc.com under the event. Okay, and I think we're also, we'll also put that in the, the link. Yeah, we'll link that in the video. Yeah, we'll link that in the description. Um, no, that's awesome. Also, there's a uh, Facebook post for the event, correct? Yeah, and uh, the easiest way to find that on Facebook is we have it linked through URL, so you can just go to fftcgkc.com, and everything will, everything will be on there. Uh, where the shops are located, you know, the whole community is basically plugged in online there. So Sweet. It's, a, it's a great group. It's a good place to find all the info you need. Cool, cool. Well, Jake, while we have you on the while we have you on the line, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how is Final Fantasy doing in that area at the moment? So, you know, the game's been out a little bit over a year now, and as far as I'm concerned, and what I see around at least the national the national game, how it's going in the U.S., I'd say that we probably have one of the bigger competitive scenes. We regularly run tournaments in the low twenties, so we're anticipating maybe 30 plus, maybe even 40 people coming out for the Petite Cup. Oh, that's Fingers awesome. Crossed. That's sweet. Yes. And so, uh, and we've got a really great meta. I mean, everybody here really is tearing things apart, trying to figure out what the best combos and plays are, and, you know, obviously <laughs> using all the resources <laughs> available. <laughs> okay. So it, it's pretty cutthroat. It's wonderful. We love it. It's, it's our, we have a lot of people that are migrating from other teams and coming yeah. to Final Fantasy because it's, it's just a better game. It's Let's be honest. Very good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I came from Magic myself, and I have to say, yeah, I, I haven't played Magic in months, actually. Like, I, I mean, I'll play Legacy casually on the side here and there, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mostly... definitely, it is definitely, uh, uh, there's less elitism. It's a less toxic environment. I, I really, I really enjoy the game. It's yeah, actually, fantastic. yeah, actually, the community is what made me, like, stick to it. Yeah. Uh, everyone just seems, like, really nice and really embracing. It's really awesome. So. Oh yeah, and you know if I'm like if you're trying to make a build and you're missing some cards, and I just the way people trade in this game is just incredible. Oh, we yeah. have reg people that will just like regularly give all their bulk to a new player, just like here, here's a thousand cards, enjoy, go have fun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, actually, I uh, I told my local store, um, the event coordinator, I told her, um, if you have any new players come in the store, you know, and they're like really iffy about playing, like shoot them my my phone number, and I'll just you know, throw them a bunch of commons and rares and get them started, and then, yeah. you know, and then, you know, that also, from a business perspective, means that they're going to be back in to, to spend money at the store later, exactly. so, 
It actually just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and so I actually heard, uh, Sam, you won the ARG tournament, right? The Summoner Series? I won the Summoner Series, yeah. That is fantastic. That's awesome. And you played Earth, uh, right? Earth Water? Earth, Earth, Earth Water, yes. Water with a little Earth. <laughs> water, <laughs> water with, like, yeah, you might as well, yeah. It's, like, it, what, it's really hard to describe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm an Earth fan. I'm, I'm, I'm a mono Earth player, <laughs> so I'm, I'm obsessed. <laughs> That's awesome. Did, well, uh, did you see uh, the Earth, the Ramona Earth deck won the North Cow, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. I so I did, once, I, cool. once I got into the game and I saw Shanto, I was like, I have to play <laughs> forever. This, is, this card is broken. This is the best card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, don't, I actually just don't understand. They, uh, the card by itself was just, like, amazing, and then they also made it towards, like, a rainbow element. It, yeah, the, the fact it's a quote-unquote, six-color backup, <laughs> like, it's insane. Exactly. Yeah. There's no reason to produce light or dark yet, specifically, so it does everything. Yes, it's wonderful. I love it. It's yeah. It's cute. <laughs> Alright, Jake, well... I, 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 oh, go ahead. Well, hey, um, can I talk about our regional tournament that we have coming up? Oh, right, absolutely, yeah. January, right? Oh, yeah, on Jan January. So on January 20th, um, we're going to be having a tournament at the shop at Collector's Cash. And uh, registration is going to be at 11 a.m. for that. The tournament's going to start at noon. It's a $25 uh, buy-in for the tournament, but there's a guaranteed $400 payout to you know the first place winner. So depending on how many people we get, that is only going to rise. You know, it might it might be 600 or 700 by the time oh, wow. we get everybody That's plugged in. So we're we're just trying to get more players and you know more people into it. And we'll have pricing for. Everybody else too, so it's yeah. It should be <clears throat> time. I mean, you know, that's what that's what we're all about—is growing the game. So exactly, exactly. And we're going to have uh, you know drafts and, and things like that during that tournament too for people that, that lose out on that. So we'll have a bunch of events coming up. And honestly, there's going to be so much stuff happening in Kansas City and around this area. So anybody who wants to find out that stuff, you just go to the website, and we'll have it all posted there. Awesome! That's super exciting. Yeah, great. I, mean, I think that uh, we're, we are both trying to be there as well. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Along with one of our teammates, Angel. So there should be, we're hoping for three of us. I actually got yeah, confirmation sure. from seven of us that they want to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, peop, I, you know how people are, so we'll see. I know I know there's yeah, going to be probably at least three of us that show up. Yeah. From over here in Tampa. Yeah, if, if you guys need a place to stay, I mean, we can find room. Everybody, I mean, we'll figure it out. That we're definitely we're pretty helps. people. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that definitely does we can help. get air mattresses and throw people on floors yeah. if they really want to play. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. For sure. So, yeah, um, I guess you guys just let me know. We're actually looking for um, for streamers as well if anybody okay. is interested in possibly streaming that event. Okay. Yeah, um, that also might be an option that we need to talk about too. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it would depend on how. Uh, I guess it's going to depend on how I, I do at the Petite Cup here, too. Whether or not I want to like, yeah. redeem myself there. Because <laughs> yeah, we have them here in January as well. So. Yeah. January 20th is uh, right. another Petite Cut in Tampa, right? Right, yeah. Well, it's like or is that two weeks later? later. That's, that's quite literally uh, about a two minute drive from where I am sitting right now. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah I'm excited. Totally <laughs> Alright, yeah, we'll, Jake, we'll be in touch. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, All you guys right. just get a hold of me whenever, and so, we'll, we'll go from there. But hey, Everybody have a great time, and uh, we hope to see everybody there. So Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. It should be fun. All right, you too. All right, take it easy. <clears throat> take care, Jake. And see you later. You too. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice beat. <Hang> <laughs> All right, so what do we have, what do we have next? Um, on the list, we have the Ifrit series. Yeah, so we're going to talk about <laughs> we talked about future events. Now we're going to talk about events that happened this weekend. Right. Um, past weekend. <clears throat> I'll let you lead. I don't know. I don't know how to start. Well, I have this sweet mat right here. Yeah, so we're going to start, we're gonna sweet start sweet with mat. this. I figured you can take over this part because you were there day one. I was there day two. So sure, yeah. I was there for the 1K and you won the Eiffel series. So yeah, you want to talk about day one. So day one was sweet. I mean, not just because I won. That was sweet too. But like everyone I played against was uh, awesome. Um, yeah, my deck performed awesome. It was like... Every, everything seemed to like flow just great. Um, I played the Water Earth deck uh, with Rubans and Shantonos. And um, no one's seen it yet. There is a video from uh, Christopher Matiski that he put up where he kind of interviewed you. It was like an interview did. deck tech type thing. He did, yeah. Right. And it was awesome. Um, the interview went great. You, if you want to know like the basics of the deck, um, 
definitely check that out. Uh, if you want to know like more in depth plays, you can do with the deck. Check the video out. Um, and, and as always, you want to like like promote people and support them. So mm -hmm. like just being able to talk to Crip is awesome. Yeah. Um, we've been messaging back and forth. We'll just the uh, chat with him and have life. Like, right, dialogue right. Back and forth I've talked to awesome. him since Opus Two because like the first week of Opus Two, <laughs> we made the sweet Archfiends brew. Like yeah. back when Archfiends were bad, <laughs> and uh, I talked to him. I was asking him all these questions, trying to play it. Um, so that's what I met him way back then and started talking to him anyway. Yeah. Um, and then also I'll be writing an article also for the Meta Potion website okay. on the deck. Um, and that will definitely talk a little bit about uh, the plays that I that I made, um, some different things that happened. But it'll also talk about the, the changes to the deck, uh, mm -hmm. how to beat the deck. Um, how to do and more importantly, just things that I think that people are overlooking. Well, definitely. Overlooking, overlooking also, would you say it's one thing to you know make a deck designed to beat a deck, <laughs> are you, or are you, are you talk about primarily how to deck build to hedge against things that you might be weak to or that you might yeah struggle against? Well, that that is part of it. Um, really, I talked a lot with Chris about that. So that you know, I talked about um, there being no sacred cows. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's definitely I covered that for sure. And you guys have got to watch that video because Chris is a genius, and so like mm -hmm. the way he presents things is just wonderful. Um, but no, really, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the things that are outside of the actual deck list that people yeah. are neglecting. And I'm going to talk about your, your, your general, like, you see the magic articles um, yeah. that are like, oh, you need to eat and you need to sleep. Yeah. I'm talking, that's, there's that's, just... That's, you're, that's natural. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Even, you don't talk about There's that. just other things that I think that people are neglecting. Yeah. Uh, like, mental focus. Um, people, thought it, I, like, people thought it was weird between every single round of the top eight. I got up. Wouldn't got a drink of water. I wouldn't talk to Max. I wouldn't talk to my friends playing the Dragon Ball series. Uh, congratulations to George for winning the Dragon Ball series and Colin for top eight. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> I, 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 like, I was kind of one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but I wouldn't talk to them and just relax. Like, I didn't talk anything about Final Fantasy. I just cleared my mind, mm -hmm. uh, got some water, used the restroom, then went and sat down and played my next match. Yep. And I did that between every round, every game. Yeah, because if you try to dwell on, like, oh, this mistake was made or this happened, you're living kind of there, you got to forward thinking. It's a huge thing. That would, right, yep. Especially in magic, too. So I got to say, you know, a lot of people were apprehensive about there being no prize support. Um, yeah. And that's understandable. That's completely understandable. And where we'd like to move is in a direction where we have infinite prize support. Uh, and the way we get there is that you guys show up to these events. Right. Attendance and, is everything. Yeah, and we promote these events. <laughs> like day two. Yeah. All right, so there were thir 33 people for day one? Yep. Okay. There were 24 reported for day two. I think we started with 28, and we just had a couple drops. And yeah, like, I, was one of the, I was one of the drops. We're, well, no, we had actually 28. We had a... Yeah. Actually, yeah, I want to say we were up to table 15 or 16 yep. at first of matches, and then yep. it dropped down <clears> because I think it was dropped. But Right, so I, I signed up to play in the Sunday event, and then... After winning the Saturday event, I decided not to play the Sunday event. Um, mm -hmm. And that I'll, I'll talk about in the article for sure. That was also like a mental health thing um, as well. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, really, I thought it was yeah. really great. Um, it was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I really liked uh, a number of the decks I saw. <laughs> yeah. What I constantly kept seeing, though, is I would sit down and the person next to me would be like, oh, they were playing this sweet brew. I'm like, oh, I, I wanted to play that. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to play that. And as I moved up tables, that happened more and more. Mm -hmm. showed me that like the meta people looking side no, to side. no, no, that as I moved up tables, there were sweeter and sweeter brews. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You know, like the yeah. day two, that three color monsters deck, that was a lot of water, but then had some lightning and ice, and then like earth kept it. Yeah. Like, that's sweet. Yeah, that deck didn't play three ghoul though, right? Uh, I didn't look super hard at the list yet, but uh. <laughs> ghoul, man. <Cool. laughs> anyway. <clears throat> anyway, we'll move on to the winter cup. Okay. So, your Europeans, they like water? Uh, yeah, something like that. They're, uh, they're pretty thirsty over there, I guess. I don't know. There's, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a whole big pond between us. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the water deck is obviously insane. It, uh, it looked a lot like just Opus 3 water, too. Like, there was there were a couple different flavors, though. There was one that had there was four seven or five, right? There were four mono water lists. Yeah. I, I looked at two of them. One was, like, the old classic Nine Engine, like, I had Zidane. Also played Emperor. Right, yeah. Two Light Zidane and one Emperor. Right, yeah. And then it went to the like the next one down was like monsters. It had Gao well, there, and it had Strago and it had like that whole package. Yeah. Well, there's no difference between playing a third Zidane and a 
first emperor over the third Zidane if you're as right, as you can never play anything together anyway. Right, so there's no difference if you were to play like one light card and two dark cards. Or two, right, you right. Know, you, you're you, not playing you Cosmos or Chaos, so. Right, right, right. It, even if you were, if there was three Zidane, you still can't play them. So, right. yeah. Okay, so the Winter Cup was really cool. Um, I I liked a lot of the lists, but, but uh, they weren't they weren't as experimental as I would have yeah, liked to see. Yeah, they were kind of. I might say run of the mill, but they were very direct. You knew exactly what it was doing. You knew exactly why they chose them. But here's the thing: that was, that was a huge event, right? That was like um, 130. And so, if you play a deck like mine, like one, I tested it a lot. I had a whole lot of like experience behind the deck. We played a lot here in Tampa. We played we, we do play testing a lot. Like what four weeks? You probably played it for three weeks. Yeah, yeah so like, I, I tested the deck a whole bunch, um, but still. There were things that needed to be changed, and there are changes that need to be made with the deck. Whereas, like, I feel like if I'm going to play in, in, in a big 100 plus person event, I'm going to play something that's very streamlined, right? And that I know is going to do well, like Mono Water, like Mono Water, <laughs> yeah, or Mono Lightning. Makes been, sense, yeah. Would have been another choice. Um, and Mono Lightning did top, right? Mono Lightning was in like eighth or something, I think. Okay, right? then they had some, then they had some of those uh, wind lightning decks as well. Yes, yeah, third or fourth. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, that deck is. The Wind Lightning deck, um, also, uh, Dan Wim won the South, the South, South, right? It was the yeah, Nortel was the Mono Earth. Mono Earth deck, yeah, and Dan Wim won with uh, the Wind Lightning deck. Um, I beat the Wind Lightning deck in the semifinals of my uh, series. Mm -hmm. Of the 1K, Wind Lightning won that one as well. Yep. Right? Wind Lightning um, and Cosmer was in third or fourth with Playing Eagles. Yeah, he had three Lulu. He, he, uh, he was Lulu H. Yeah. His opponent didn't play the Lulu package at all. He played like Maria, kind of more like mid rangey right. looking thing. But like he still had like Barbarisha, Cactor type stuff. Right. Um. So yeah, there's a Mono Lightning, four Mono Water, two Wind Lightning, and a Fire Earth. Right. Okay. And the Mono Lightning was top four. Okay. So yeah, the, the I think that deck is first off one of the sweetest things to come out of that game for sure. Which one? The the Wind Lightning deck. Uh, and, and with that, I have to say, like, a, a big plus for that deck is Orlando, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. But we did say. our... And again, well, and Cactar is pretty good. That what In uh, our predictions, didn't we have Orlando kind of... Yeah. He, he wasn't super high on the list, but he was creeping up there. Yeah. And we were very excited about him. We weren't sure how effective he was going to be. Yeah, I mean... And now we're like, oh, cool. Like, even on, like, turn two, if, they, if they're greedy, they play a big threat, you just go, okay, well, I had two backups turn one. I'm going to go Cactor, ping your guy, and Orlando, you're dead. Yeah, I had to Captain <laughs> L in Orlando no less than four... Time here in the event, mm -hmm. yeah. Like that card is huge. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it's it's right it right. is so good. It's yeah. Neg seven into ping effects or whatever else, and activating on blocks. Yeah, and then we just talked to Jake, who is a Mono Earth fan. Right. Um, to see it win the the NorCal event was pretty sweet too. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely didn't expect that. Like if you asked me <laughs> to name five decks that might win, pretty sure that would not would not. Mono Earth would have made my top ten. Also, the Mono Ice deck from the one uh, K. Uh, I would not have expected that for yeah. uh, like a breakout deck for the meta. Yeah, but it, it is sweet. Um, hey, playing big guys is yeah. not falling out of fashion yet. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we talked a little bit about future events. We talked about Kansas City. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Tampa has the Petite Cup coming January twentieth. Twentieth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. I hope that you guys are all there. Um, if you're there, come say hello. I hope to crush it. Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll both be at that one, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's here. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's literally. <laughs> it's, our it's our local store, so. Yeah, it's uh, two minutes from my house. Um, or five will... minutes from my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... We'll be playtesting a lot for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, let's talk about the meta game. Sure. What path do you see that is taking? Uh, people are still sticking to the streamlined list, it looks like. They've got the <laughs> water, the mono lightning, of course. Um, yeah. Which kind of brings up a question that I want to talk about, which is, are we getting concerned at all about the same elements <laughs> overperforming over other decks? So, in Opus 2, Mono Lightning dominated. It was insane. In Opus 3, Mono Lightning existed. It was pretty good. Mono Water did really, really well. Uh, we found some weird, like, Fusoya stuff at the end, and, like, there were a lot of cool broods, but in the end, Mono Lightning and Mono Water were two huge selections. Even at Worlds, I got to play three Mono decks out of two. Yep. Then, in this meta, Mono Lightning one was that the first mm -hmm. event, like the first yep. like, big event. Yep. Mono yep. Water just won the, the Petit Cup. Yep, the another copy of that was in the top four, and we had four Mono Water there too. 
Yep. Is there any concern that the elements, regardless of how much is printed answer-wise in the other colors, that they're still overperforming? No, none for me. No. I, I don't think so either. No. I just I could see people maybe getting kind of mad, like, I love Earth. Well, let, me, let me ask you this. What was, in your opinion, honest, honest to God, the best Opus 3 deck, period? Uh, the Fusoya deck. The Fusoya deck. Yes, it was insane. And <laughs> how long were we in the Opus 3 metagame before we discovered the Fusoya deck? Oh, no, I completely agree. This, that's why I'm not scared. I'm not worried yeah. about it. But I can definitely see some people getting kind of like, oh, I love Mono Wind or I love Wind decks, but man, I can't, like, this is boring yeah. playing against the same deck every day. It's like, yeah, I can maybe see that, but... Yeah, I mean, like, I... Let me just say, like, I, I would not be surprised if the Fusoya deck ended up being, like, one of the best decks in the Opus 4 metagame. Yeah. Um... I just, we just need Emperor to slow down a little bit. Yeah. When Emperor slows down a little bit, maybe I'll bust up the Fasoya. Yeah. Also, whenever I can find an excuse not to play Emperor, because right now, right, right. all my lists start with Emperor. Emperor's always been good, but yeah. like, people have the justification now, oh, it beats monsters. I, so I played Sam's back day two at the 1k, um, and we changed, what, three cards, two cards? Something yeah, like three that. three cards, yeah. Tweaked a couple cards, and uh, I ran it back, I did okay at the beginning, <laughs> and I kind of had some... Crash. Yeah. Um, but, but, to, I, I was, but but to Zach's credit, he had never played the deck before. That's true. And I think the deck is insanely hard to play. Um, and, and yeah, like round three, I lost a deck out where I had game next turn. And like, oh, that was so brutal. But um, and that was the round that you know. And that's the nature of lost, the so. deck. Like I probably could have played tighter a previous turn and gotten one extra damage in or something. And yeah, like, for sure. More pressure. But for uh, sure. I was one of two monster decks. The only other one being I didn't. I wasn't even aware of him existing until he got to the top eight. I saw him in the three cup list. So, like, nobody was playing monsters, at least not, like, a monster-centric deck. So yeah. everyone's justification for Emperor being, like, this god card isn't really justified. However, people realize, oh, hey, he's actually just good yeah. against decks. Like, it just shuts down half of the abilities out there. Right? I mean, yeah. And Emperor's probably always just been... That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, always been good, but people never, like, always want to play Light Zidane, or we want to play Fusoya, or they want I mean, to play other cards. Yeah. I mean, Light Zidane might also be the best light card ever made. Maybe. Yeah, I, I mean... mean you could argue Cosmos, you could argue... I mean, like, there's stronger ones. Ultima's stronger, you know, right. in a vacuum or whatever. Uh, but Light Zidane is played in decks with no Final Fantasy IX characters. Like, it's just... True, yeah, like uh, the Archfiends deck. The uh, Monofly yeah. Archfiends. And a lot, of lost, they want to draw a, a lot of the Model Lightning decks were playing it, too, before Emperor. Mm -hmm. And I could see them going back to that, too. Um, once Emperor shuts, stops shutting down so much. <laughs> um, and it's just that's just going to evolve with people building their deck lists to not include copies, like... Of Fasoya or Shadow or um, Adamant Toys. Yeah, I mean every every element has an answer now though. Like sure, yeah. We, he's good, but he's he's easily beatable. Like he dies to Alcid combo. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, yeah. Not not in my deck. No. Not not in your deck. Min move, <laughs> yeah, but min move. Adamant Toys will. If, if our argument it. is oh, but min move, then a lot of cards are bad. But, uh, yeah, I mean, well, Minwu is just insane. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, we played three. We played, played so three. I'm hoping that I'm hoping the metagame shifts away from Emperor because it it does uh, put a lot of things in check. Yeah. Um, I compared it when I was in the tournament to a Chalice in the Void. Anybody familiar from Magic? Like, if you just play like a turn one or turn two Chalice on one, what it does is it counters every spell at that cost. Yeah. So it feels a lot like that, where it's like it just shuts down a portion of your deck. Sure, you can still play the cards, but they don't actually get their full value out of it. Yeah, and what so, if you played Chalice and like, you had to stand still and play? Stuff like that. And yeah, so, you know, yeah. exactly. All right, so, see, so the, the first time they play something, you just draw right. three cards. But in this case, you counter it and you draw a card. Yeah. You're protecting your Emperors. It's, and, man, when I got that lock on, like first round, somebody misplayed once into my Cleon. That's all it took. Next was, turn, I played Gal, got Cleon back, and I had at that point I had Gal, Emperor, Cleon. Was Cleon in the chapters game? Doesn't it? Doesn't I don't it feel know. like a mistake? It. I don't know if it's a mistake though, because like it feels like an Emperor that's only that only water has access to. No, I get I, I get that water has the best summon, so it's shutting itself down in some way. I think that's probably the justification for like the balance side of it is if you put it in the element that wants to have summons most effectively. They, like, they, they already they tried that though, right? The the element that wants to have the biggest, baddest dudes is Earth, and they give it Shantota. That's true, yeah. <laughs> right? Like like the the fix for broken cards isn't putting it in decks that want to do those things. You know what I'm saying? Like right, Shantota's right. insane. 
But like we play Earthen decks just to have Shantono. <laughs> I, I play so my theory behind playing Earth in my deck start off with I wanna beat Emperor, period. Yeah. And Earth, and that's the best way to beat Emperor, you just get rid of it. Shantono. Um, they can't out of back, whatever. Yeah, and then Rab Raban came Raban out because it's like I wanted to be able to kill their second Emperor. And unfortunately, you can't do that with Shantano. Yep. So, that's that's where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else that we need to cover? Um, event wise, I don't think so. Okay. What meta game? I think I brought up my question. That was the main thing I want to talk about. Was just to see okay. if there's any sort of anything in your brain that was like, eh, I don't like the same elements performing. But I I agree with you. Where I think it just takes a little innovation. And pushing past, just be like, oh, okay, this is how to beat uh, those decks or how to compete with them. And like, the Wind Lightning deck's fine, it's great. Yeah. So, like, there are other decks out there that are not monocolor, they're plenty fine. Okay, and what about um, your choice for, like, what are you going to be playing Friday? Do you have, have to pick it up? Uh, Friday, playing? I'm going to be in New York. Oh, okay. Uh, are, you <laughs> playing, are you playing in New York? No, I, there's uh, no scene in my, uh, well, there is, they're trying to get a scene together, but they okay. don't have enough players right now. Um, well, maybe you can help with that while you're there. I tried. Oh, Next time I was there, not during Irma. But, uh, okay. No, so if I were playing Friday, though, if um, you were playing Friday. I would either be trying, I'd either be tweaking my Wind Lightning and playing that again. So, because I was playing it before like, yeah. this weekend, I just didn't have kind of an idea of what I want my Wind Backups to be. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part of the deck building process is to figure out what Wind Backups are useful yeah. for it. Because I'm playing a Lulu version. Like, okay, um, yeah. And. The other deck would be uh, Christopher <laughs> shared a list yesterday. Yep. It was Ice Earth. Yep. Uh, Dalaluma. Yep. So I love Wind Earth Dalaluma. I think it's good, yep. but there's a couple problems that I haven't fixed yet. Um, that deck looks sweet. Yep. Having Devout for Dalaluma is insane. That's what also, I, that's why I'm be playing Friday. Is it that deck? I have it built. Uh, do you did you tweak it from what he had? I did. Because I added three Cactor and three Sid. World of Tom Fancy. Okay. And uh, I have Cosmos already, so <laughs> I added those. Um, and then. Uh, so. Oh, so oh, yeah, so you I have Cosmos. Two, you two, two. some more? Or. What? You Sorry? kept the one Cosmos? I have one Cosmos. Yeah, Shantoto. And then I have three Shantoto, and then I have a three Cactor that I'll just pitch early, or if I have Cosmos early, I can play it. Or and then I can sit along the back. Okay. Um, and then the uh, other. The searches. So you can <laughs> two you can play one to two six searches, which searches Dalaluma. I keep yeah. forgetting he's a six character. Yeah. So with ice it makes sense that he is in there. So it's great. I love it. Because Devout is such a powerful card anyway. And right. you get the Terra tricks, like where you can bring back the Opus One Terra, charge three guys on the stack, use the S ability, yeah. you pay through your dudes. Yeah. If Dalaluma's on the field, you can ping him with your Terra to finish off something that's bigger. It's Magic great. Pop? I think it's good. Magic Pop for Terra too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the next yeah. week. It's super I'll sweet. be playing it on Friday. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, I'm super excited about it. I'll be curious to talk to you after about the changes. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see how much we changed that were similar. But. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that's it for us. Yeah. Um, we will catch you guys. Are you going to be back next week or no? Um, I am flying out Thursday, and I will be back next Thursday at like midnight. Midnight on that Thursday, so like early. And okay. So, so we'll I'll be around Friday. All right, so we will have the podcast available for you guys probably by next weekend, mm -hmm. we're hoping. Um, so here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, obviously, like the podcast. Obviously, subscribe if we manage to get this up to YouTube this yeah, time. Right. <laughs> um, but don't don't stop there. Go like the the North American page for yep. Final Fantasy. Go like Chris's page. Go like Joseph Beer's page. Uh, Vince, I'm, Vince's blog. Yeah, go like Vince's blog. Go subscribe to the YouTube channels, guys. Spread the word. Support the game. Also, okay. like the Square Enix Final Fantasy trading card game pages. Yes. Like, yes. That I mean, was the thing that uh, uh, got brought up from Joe in the yep. US group. He's like, yep. there's 3,000 people in the US group, and there's only like 1,500 likes on yep. the trading card. Yeah, page. So, so hashtag grow the game. Yep. I, I really Always. need that. Here, you do that. Uh, the more likes that page has, the more people are going to see it. Yep. The more shares, the more people are going to see it. You know, Whatever you guys can do to grow the game, do that. It's it's not just in the game's best interest, it's in your own best interest. Yep. Um, if you want to see the game flourish and grow. Um, so please go do that. Go like uh, Mognet, go like Meta, Meta Potion, just go... Support all content creators right now. Yeah, I mean, like... and it's in your best interest to have resources, all right. of these resources available to exactly. you. Exactly, yeah. You know, 
there, there's no reason not to. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Yeah.